One of the phones that was really anticipated in the recent past in the mid-range was the OB SF1 and that has come to India and we did our unboxing and first impressions recently and after using it for a while, here we are back for the detail review. This is GK from techpp.com and you're watching the detail review of the OB SF1. So talking about this phone, we have to start with the design because uh, one of the most reputed companies called the Ammunition Studio for designing has been involved in every aspect of the UI, the hardware and different things. And that is what we have to concentrate on. This phone is very unique because the screen just stands out. Uh, it, it is in a raised platform there and uh, OB says that this will uh, give a lot of uh, good experience to the user. Um, but did we find that to be the case? You'll find out as we go down the review line. So in terms of uh, the form factor, this comes at around 8 mm thickness without the screen and weighs uh, around 147 grams. So it's, it's quite light enough. And it holds a uh, five, inch, uh, 5 inch screen, that is the Incel IPS LCD screen with a Gorilla Glass 3 protection and packing as much as 443 uh, you know, pixels per inch. So it is a very good screen that we are seeing here. And this phone would start reminding you of the Lumia series, especially the 920 or the 925, given the fact that it's you know, got that rectangular look with those edges. Um, the top two edges are sharp while the bottom uh, two edges are rounded off and the reason why I'm mentioning that is this phone is not uh, easy for the one-handed use though it is 5 inch screen and more often than not when you're holding the phone like that it starts poking your finger when you're holding it at the top. Um, just a nitpick but still uh, uh, you know, we would mention that. There are certain unconventional aspects of the phone. The SIM tray that holds the dual SIM, both of which are 4G uh, LTE micro SIMs, will come on the right side, whereas the volume and the power, uh, the volume rockers and the power button come on the left. So if you are having this phone, you might take a while to reprogram your hands uh, or the fingers because you you're more often than not uh, finding the buttons on the right and the left both. But here we have uh, the complete set on the left side. And talking about the buttons, these do not pop out. These are almost in the same uh, plane as the uh, as the edge, and uh, it doesn't go inside well enough to give you that feedback. So again, you might have to. Uh, start pressing it slightly harder than you would usually do with the other phones but uh, but it works well when you get used to it and on the top you have uh, the 3.5 mm audio jack again this comes with uh, some sort of a gray band that gives an appealing look on the bottom we have uh, the speaker grill and the you know, usb port for charging on the back we have a 13 megapixel camera with uh, led flash and we also have the OB branding. So the back of the phone has a matte finish to it, no, not slippery at all. But one disadvantage is that it picks up a lot of smudges and you'll find yourself uh, you know, cleaning it periodically. On the front, we have the 5 megapixel camera also coming with a flash and uh, there are no capacitive buttons. And uh, this has the on-screen buttons to it. So overall, it has a very good hardware package and a unique look to it, uh, except for the fact that the screen is on a race platform. And especially when you're on calls without the earphones, since this is, uh, you know, there are multiple uh, levels on these edges and that might start poking uh, your ears and start making you, uh, you know, uncomfortable. So the SF1 uh, packs a Snap, Qualcomm Snapdragon 615 64-bit uh, processor that is clocked at 1.5 gigahertz accompanied by uh, 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of uh, internal memory. Uh, that is the version that we have here. There's also uh, another version with a 6 GB uh, variant, uh, but the one that we have here is a 32 gig variant. Uh, this can be expanded up to 64 GB via the micro SD slot. And uh, this runs on the Lightspeed OS and this is built off Android uh, Lollipop. 5.0.2. So though this has a very uh, decent processor, you know, which is also found in many other uh, competitors, the Moto uh, X Play uh, performed very well when it came to the software with the same processor. Here, there are tons of lags. For example, take a look at this. It's so slow to respond and 
every bit of the operation that you make it there is a lag it's as if it's moving against the wind there's some sort of a struggle that is happening and it it might start irritating you after a while because everything that you do with the default uh, applications or the te- be the telephony bit or uh, you know trying to look at the multitasking and things like that it's going to start irritating you we had couple of software updates that came in but none of them uh, addressed this issue uh, so we don't know what's happening on that front um, so that is what it is and uh, by default the dialer app wasn't here you had to you know kind of go to the app drawer and bring it down and place it here so these are the tiny aspects of the os where uh, you know the user might uh, might not have a good onboarding experience if you will because the te- the telephone app uh, the dialer app rather is the first one that uh, you would look for hey that's what the smartphone uh, should be about right so those are the things i think uh, you know, ob should really take care of but the good news is that uh, this phone is very good for gaming uh, we game a lot of uh, games like uh, riptide 2 um, we also did asphalt and things like that uh, none of them have showed any signs of lags and the output via the speaker was also very good and that is what we loved uh, and there was no overheating issues at all and usually uh, snapdragon 615 the, there's one question that pops out of people's mind does it overheat not at all it does get warmed up but there are no signs whatsoever of overheating of course uh, the top portion around the camera did get warm but uh, n- uh, not to a level where uh, it made us feel uncomfortable and even the screen is very good um you know it, it's a overall good experience when you're um, consuming multimedia on this phone and talking about multimedia this phone comes with uh, the dolby support and especially with the earphones on you will have an amazing uh, audio experience so kudos to ob on that one So I'm running the game on the maximum possible volume but the loudspeaker is not so loud enough of course it it's decent there's no distortion or jarring so there you saw uh, a minor stutter that occurred um so but that's not the case with the earphones earphones it's loud enough um you know to do your uh, liking but the speaker phone it's not as loud as you would want it to be So apart from the occasional stutters gaming is good enough uh, on this phone. So how does the phone perform in terms of the battery? It comes with a 3000 mAh battery and it can easily get you through a day. We found ourselves getting into screen on times of anywhere between 4 and 4.5 even on a day when we uh, did a lot of gaming and things like that. So you should have no worries around the battery department and it comes with a quick charge 1.0 may not make too much of a difference when you compare it with uh, without the quick charge but it takes somewhere around 2 uh, uh, hours to charge up fully f- uh, from 0 to 100 so coming to the next ax- aspect the camera so the camera app is very simple you have uh, all the uh, options on the left the settings um, the flash the the selfie mode uh, and some of the effects that you can give like the sapi or the negative mode and things like that uh, it's it's a though it is minimum it has uh, very good features that it packs in and uh, it's very snappy and the processing is fast uh, the focus also is quick enough so if you go into the settings um, you can also see the tons of options that you have uh, here the focus mode the saturation and things like that so how does this perform in terms of uh, the real life performance daylight pictures are good the one uh, one area of weakness for the sf1 is the exposure it tends to overexpose pictures if you look at this there's a lot of whites coming into play in uh, everything that you're looking at here so here also if if you were to zoom in the lot of portions that are really washed out because of the sun in the background So if you look at this it's almost washing out the top portion 
uh, we've seen other cameras on a similar uh, similar range phones do a much better job so here also if you see major portion of the picture is washed out and even in terms of macros at, at times it struggles uh, it does a very good job in terms of panorama stitching here again So the camera is pretty decent, the front and the back both, but you know, when it comes to handling exposures, uh, it, it does a sloppy job and that is something that uh, we were not happy about. So summing up, now the SF1 is very good in terms of the build quality, it's got a very unique look to it, uh, the battery backup is good and uh, the price is also very competitive, uh, 13999 coming for a 32 gig version that we have here and uh, like I said the unique design and uh, very good audio output especially when you're using the earphones and what is bad the OS is very laggy it's going to start irritating you because anything that you want to do be it calling messaging or task manager or opening up any app it lags so much that it's going to start irritating you uh, uh, one of the solutions that you might have to uh, come up with or, or a turnaround is using a third-party launcher uh, but then it would not work as good as uh, the native application that comes with this. And for a 5-inch screen, this is rather big. So some might find it really bulky and it's almost uh, uh, touching the height of other phones like OnePlus One and things like that. So that could um, act against you if you're trying to look for a handy phone for a 5-inch screen. In terms of the computation, uh, the phones that you can consider are uh, the OnePlus X, uh, which has a good camera, but again, in, in certain aspects of the battery performance, it lags. There is also the Vibus one uh, around the same price range, slightly, uh, you know, one or two thousand more, but again, a good consideration. And we have uh, the good old Xiaomi Mi 4 and the Mi 4i that you can also consider. We really hope that the software uh, issue is fixed. And if OB does that, this can be a commendable phone for the price uh, that is being offered at. So OB seems to be concentrating a lot on hardware and they've done a very good job at that. But I think the software department is where they have to put their focus on. Uh, because this phone is running on 5.0.2 when much of the computation, even on phones that are uh, priced much lesser, are running on 5.1. So hopefully uh, they, they do something really good in this department and that would make the phone commendable and highly competitive uh, in this particular price range. Do let us know what you think, hit the like button and subscribe for more interesting uh, updates on the gadget world. Until the next one, this is GK from techpp.com signing off, bye-bye.